All right. Welcome, guys. We are back. We have a guest with us. Elise, how do you spell your, uh, say your last name? Kopecky. Co that's not good. I had it right. So Elise is you the author. You think there was like a silent K Well, or you never know. Like, they announced the wrong the first time. Anyhow, we are super honored that Elise came to us today. Definitely, I think you were probably surprised. They were like, hey, come to our office. It's like, is this your like apartment? And like, yeah, we have a yeah. home office. <laughs> but no, we are dog. so happy that she came in today because she has a new book out. And if you guys have not checked out her old book, it is phenomenal. It was a New York Times bestseller for how long? It was on the monthly list for a total of seven months. Wow. Seven months. Guys, this is this is like the staple, and now we have version two. So you actually awesome. don't need the second one or the first one first, right? You can have them in any order. Yeah, I mean, we love using them together, yeah. um, especially if you're going to follow some of our like uh, meal plans and stuff, but gotcha. they individually can be... They're amazing. So yeah. we're going to go into this. We're going to talk all about nutrition. We're going to talk about how like the healing power of foods and how you guys have incorporated that into your books. You yeah. have, um, we, and, and of course, we're taking your questions. So, you want to talk about the giveaway? Let's talk about the giveaway, guys. Uh, hit the link in the description to that Gleam link, and you could get a copy uh, of one of these guys. Hopefully, a signed copy. Of course. Which would be the best type signed. of copy. Well, it might already um, be signed. This one might already be signed. So we're going to give this to two winners. Hit the link down below. Sign up. As you guys know yeah. the drill, this we are going to do a giveaway at the end of next week's show for all of you guys watching the recording. Guess what? You can enter, too. It is and then the, the bonus part. Look at that. Sign awesome. Boom. Sign copies right there. Um, and you can keep track of what these guys are up to, follow along if half of you guys are probably already following them already. You know. Yeah, totally. So so we have, first of all, actually... Do they get t-shirts? Yeah, actually, did you guys <laughs> notice that we had t-shirts? <laughs> Look at this. This is Look from the run yesterday. I only got only put up the one photo uh, before the show started, but we had a run. I don't think there were hundreds of people there. Over, I think, 300. You Whoa! Were, at least that she was, it was signing signatures. How's your hand doing? Pretty good, but yeah. I, I'm sore from that fun run. Fun run in San Francisco is pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, like the people don't take. Yeah, no, easy. no. They're all they're all excited. They probably we noticed that from our first book tour. We did runs in every city we went to. Yeah, and the fastest like casual fun run was San Francisco. Oh really? And Shalane was we were prepared. We we're like they're gonna be pushing the pace. Oh, down. that's hilarious. <laughs> so that's fun. We asked them to go slower, but oh, that's awesome. So guys, we of course have Craig's green smoothie, but yes. it's not Craig's green smoothie completely this time because Cheers. we had some modifications made by Chef Elise right here. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, and if you- We haven't tried it yet. So Cheers. if you don't like it, uh, I poured her less just because in case like she was I like, know. oh God, I have to drink this on camera. Okay. I'm a little bit scared. Yeah. I saw what went in there. Oh God. Mm. I can already see your influence. It's a significant improvement in taste With the lemon and the is. ginger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so last week when we had Brian on, uh, Craig made the smoothie together. And I asked and grilled Brian, and I was like, hey, you know, like, what grade would you give Craig for a smoothie? And he was very generous with his grading, and then I was like, okay, is this... You gave me an A, just I say know, it. but is this, like, an a. is this, like, grade Not inflation? Like, plus, though. like smoothie yeah, grade? It, it wouldn't um, be great on taste, though. But I have a feeling that Elise <laughs> might be a little bit of a, a stiffer grader, so... Without necessarily giving the letter grade, you can if you want. Okay. Because that's always fun, and I can hold that over him for the next few shows. What What did you see in his smoothie? When he told me he was going to put a tomato in there, I was very frightened. <laughs> I've never heard of anyone putting I, a tomato I in just, smoothie. Tomatoes, that's how we do it in San Francisco. It's a fruit. You know? A tomato is a fruit, yeah, right? Why not? I don't know. Yeah. I kind of taste something slightly garlicky. What would that be? Would that be just from the knife that he chopped, he chopped garlic with a, recently? Did you use a dirty knife? No, it was a it was absolutely a fresh time. I don't taste the garlic. I taste the I taste the ginger strong. Oh, yeah. you know what? It could be that the ginger was sitting with the garlic in the bowl. Oh, oh yeah. Oh wow. Those are some yeah. advanced level taste buds right there. You gotta have a separate there. cutting board. We have a fruit cutting board and a and garlic actually, onion cutting board. That you cut it on a cutting board that I do use for garlic. Oh man, that's. There you go. Have have you, all right. Okay, so have and you always a, had taste buds this sensitive? I think I have, I've always had like sensitive, like s smell and hearing and you know, I yeah. don't think I ever realized like taste too growing up, but I've always been just sensitive senses overall. Like the slightest like perfume can give me a headache or mm, things gotcha. like that. Like I've always been that way. Um, but just since this is a second career for me, I've really discovered like I can 
eat something at a restaurant and I can tell you exactly what's in it. Um, yeah. Just in the last few years since I started doing this. Sorry, we were what adjusting are we, what the are we focus doing here? here because everyone is saying the focus is a little off. Oh, there we go. Thanks, guys. All right. Hope we're trying to get that a little bit better. Now it's a close up of my Garlic face. Garlic ginger like rookie mistake says Jessica. It's one of our teams. Yes. Oh man. I know. We're getting tough. Let's let's say hi to to everyone. All the regulars um, that are in there online so far. Uh, David, what's going on? Sam, how you doing? Um, Karen Rowe from Salt Lake City, Utah. Karen, uh, is this your first time here? Because I don't recognize your name. Running Geek Girl, aka Heather. Hi from Arkansas. Karen, as you just said. Rachel, what's up? Um, Nirmal Zala. We, we may get to some 5k tips today. Who yeah, knows? we can talk about 5k tips. Elise um, can tell us about her hi, last 5k. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Jamila Adams, Sam Kai, what's up? Edward, how you doing? Lucas, Tanae, John, Rich, how are you guys doing? Hello. Good to here today. Sam says, what are the best protein supplements to, talk, to put in smoothies? It's funny you asked that. We were talking a little bit about the supplements that I've been putting in my smoothies. I would love to know what, uh, what you recommend there. Uh, so yeah, um, Shalane and I both are not very big on protein powders and supplements. Yeah. Um, protein powders are highly processed and can be really difficult on your digestive system, mm -hmm. which isn't good for runners. Plus they get all clumpy and weird. Yeah, so... Yeah. I don't like the clumpy weirdness thing. Anything that I need like a shaker right. in the bottle. Um, so a lot of runners obsess over protein because we need protein for recovery. But if you're eating a whole foods diet, you're likely getting enough yeah. protein from other foods, especially if you're eating eggs and um, things like that. So we, Shalane and I, both don't put protein powders in our smoothies on a regular yeah. basis. But if you do want to add a protein powder, my favorite is the collagen protein supplements. Yeah. Or um, if you're vegan, vegetarian, then I'm, I'm, like, I'm liking um, hemp protein because it's less processed. Okay. But all the like brown rice protein powders and the other um, vegan yeah. protein powders, they new research suggests that your body can even absorb that kind of protein because of how it's processed. And not only that, but it also might hinder your body from being able to digest the protein you eat right after it. So if you're having so, protein, so it really is about yeah. protein absorption, not about right. consumption. Right. Yeah. So the number of grams of protein listed on a packaged um, supplement oh, drink isn't isn't what your body is actually able what about to use. You'd be better off. Um, I know pea protein is a common I think one. it's pretty hard to digest. Oh, yeah. Oh, Interesting. Wow. Okay. okay. And hemp, hemp protein at least also has like the good fats in there, so it's not okay. as processed and it needs to be refrigerated because it's not um, as shelf stable, but the ones that can just sit in your cabinet for two years and never go bad, those yeah. are like not even close to real food. So right. your body yeah. is just like, your body doesn't know what to do with it, so it's just like passing yeah. it through. Interesting. Now, yeah. one more zoomed out, one more geeked out question before we kind of zoom like out this. and this talk is about this is the bigger amazing. picture of, of like the cookbooks. The the lemon is, is a great ad. Um, Craig was putting frozen raw chard in there. Oh, and right. a lot of times with vegetables, we're like, oh, raw, it can be better because things right. aren't. I have a lift, look at a gift <laughs> horse in the mouth that make you a smoothie all the time. He's like, you know what? I don't like the raw chard in You know there. what? I'm really starting to smell the garlic in this. <laughs> <laughs> it's very garlicky. It's very garlicky, but you know. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Like, garlic board. Is Garlic is good for your immune system. Yeah, there see, it's there another power food. I was just kind of slipping right in there. Wait, yeah. couldn't you flip that around? It's like cut your fruits on a garlic board so you get a little bit of that seeping in. Yeah. Um, but anyway, you mentioned that, uh, what was it, kale or chard, when it's cooked raw, it's not as uh, accessible. Right. What was um, it? What were, what no, were you some, there? So I love to use raw kale in smoothies. I mm -hmm. usually use fresh raw kale, but frozen is fine too. But the raw, the the greens that I don't like to eat raw is um, Swiss chard and spinach because it's high in, in a type of acid that like delete, depletes minerals from your bones. Oh, interesting. Um, so those kind of leafy greens are super healthy, but they should be cooked. A lot of people eat spinach salads, and spinach is much best better to eat cooked. Interesting. So you don't deplete minerals. So I see. So I feel like for myself, like I would lump all these greens into like one category. Yeah. But they really aren't. Is what you're saying? Pretty different. Different. So I typically I go to the farmer's market, I get the kale, I get the shard, mm -hmm. I come home, I chop it up, and I put it in Ziploc bags, put it in the freezer, right. that way it doesn't like wilt over the week. Right. So if I was gonna do it, could I like like steam the the shard and the the, um, the spinach and then put it in the freezer? Would that be the same um, thing? Yeah, it might be hard to break it into pieces to that blend it and be pretty solid. Yeah. I would yeah. just <clears throat> suggest. Um, Sticking to kale for smoothies. Okay. Like, you, I love Swiss chard, but it's 
I love it like sauteed with garlic and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, add a little olive oil and salt and pepper. And oh yeah, okay. I love that. Fair enough. So I wanted to turn to this quote I found on your Instagram. Wait, wait, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's put it up there. Which one is it? Uh, are we, okay. We can play this game and you can put it up there. Yeah. We're going to test Craig's multitasking skills of camera one, camera two, camera three. Uh, but anyway, the quote is, healthy eating isn't just kale juice, but also a juicy burger. Exactly. What do you, what do you mean by that? So runners, um, and not just runners, but athletes in general, um, will go to any extent to try to eat healthier, but sometimes they do that at, at the expense of their health. There it is. Almost. Oh, we got it. We got he it. Always there forgets go. that. See, that's why I have to be on. I gotta be on this yeah. guy. Okay, awesome. well, that's good enough for now. So when I say healthy eating isn't just kale juice, but also a juicy burger, I want to remind athletes um, not to obsess over the latest diet trend because usually if you do that, you end up missing out on a lot of other key nutrients and runners in particular obsess over macronutrients like fat, protein, carbs, yeah. and measuring that stuff and they miss out on all the good micronutrients. And people, mm. when they think of health food, all they think of is vegetables, 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 but there's a lot of incredible health benefits in a good juicy burger, especially if you're buying high quality grass fed ground beef from a local farmer, um, yeah. you're going to get the, the meat is really high. In, Good protein, good healthy fats, vitamins, minerals, iron, all the things that you need for, yeah. for distance running. Now, this is an interesting topic. Um, first of all, we got some great questions from our our resident nutritionist, uh, Elizabeth Inpine. She was hella jelly that we were talking to you today, and she's up in Sacramento, and she's like, okay. are you kidding me? I would have driven down like, this morning <laughs> to come if I could have hung out. Like, she has, like, read through your books, right. and uh, she, yeah, she's she got some really great questions, um, and I feel like this feeds into this, especially, I mean, with running in general, but more on the competitive running side, there is always this conflicting relationship with food, right? Like, runners need to eat strong, they need to mm -hmm. do this to be healthy, but then there's this simultaneous sense from the competitive standpoint that we need to be as lean as possible, right. and it can obviously lead down some unhealthy roads. So We talk about this a bunch on our show in terms yeah, of like our really own do. like histories with eating and like, you know, how you can, like with running sometimes you can blur the lines and like, mm -hmm. like what is your relationship to food as well as like what's the food you're intaking. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I, I flirted with that a little bit, but not necessarily to get into my total crazy background. Um, I'm not really crazy. I don't know why I said crazy. Because words are, I'm, I'm working on it. I'll, I'll smooth out in the next few minutes, don't worry. Go. But I just wanted to hear your thoughts on that, especially with coming out with this book. And mm -hmm. you've obviously had a long background with competitive running. Right. Yeah, so I ran competitively in college with Shalane. She was my teammate and roommate. Um, she kicked my butt every you day. You guys were practice. roommates too? Yeah, we lived together for three years in a house. Was it like you were... It was placed together? Like, did you not know each other before you were roommates, or did you kind of know each um, other No, before? we met freshman year on the first day of practice at UNC, and we became friends and ended up living together the rest of our time at UNC. There are really great photos in both of the books of that, of like, you oh, guys yeah. going all the way back. Yeah, that's right. awesome. Yeah. I've got some even better ones that are not books. Not in the do you, do you, <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Do you remember <laughs> that, like, reason. first run experience, like, being on the team? Uh, yeah, I was, I remember freshman year because I came in with, like, a very solid recruiting class of some of the best runners in the country and I just I got so demolished every day in practice. Hanging on yeah. And I got I suffered from a lot of injuries which at the time left me like heartbroken but that was the fuel for this book later in life. Yeah. So you never know, sometimes your lowest things and dealing with injuries become something that is your greatest accomplishment later on in life. So. You know, one of the things I liked about the first book um, was the way that you guys talked about addressing injuries through the food that you're consuming. And I heard Shalane when I was, we were running yesterday, I, like she was out telling somebody that one of the things she does when she has been injured is to really like focus, like turn her focus towards what she's putting in her body as right. like a healing mechanism. And so many times, and, and what we often tell people, you know, is like focus on what you can do, what you can concentrate on, whether it's like soft tissue massage and all these kind of physical things, but it's really interesting to hear about it from a food perspective. Yeah, and it's not, runners, like going back to your other question, runners think of food simply as fuel, but it's so much more than that. Mm -hmm. Cooking can be a very healing and meditative process if you're going through an injury or something else in life that's tough. Um, it's not just about 
going down to the local um, restaurant and buying something healthy, like there's something about cooking and preparing it in your own kitchen that is yeah. really healing. Um, it also helps cooking food, obviously at home is healthier, but the biggest thing um, of why, what inspired us to write this book is um, we want to teach runners that food should be indulgent and nourishing at the same time yeah. and that everything you eat needs to taste really incredibly good. Um, if you're eating something really bland and boring, you're going to be hungry the rest of the day. If you eat something really rich and satisfying, your body is going to feel satisfied, your, your mentally you'll yeah. feel satisfied, and you're less likely to reach for junky, yeah. sugary snacks later on. Now, is this also why you don't necessarily include like the number of calories, the nutritional breakdown of your recipes? Yeah, there's lots of reasons why we don't include the calorie counts. Mm. Um, one of the main reasons is because calorie counts are often wildly inaccurate. They're based off of like science from like 200 years ago that's mm -hmm. totally outdated for lots of reasons. One, the measuring the system for measuring is off. Packaged foods it's only like, like burning like, something like yeah. a, a, a unit of water up like one exactly centigrade yeah. or something. Yeah. So I had to look it up because who even knows what that measurement yeah. is related to. Yeah. So we have the definition of it in our book just to oh, show yeah. how like crazy it is that so much is based off of calorie counts. Also, it depends on the food. Like a, mm. like an, a calorie from an almond is burned differently than yeah. a calorie from um, an M&M. &M. What about salmon calories? Oh, <laughs> don't even. I don't know. We have a long-standing <laughs> joke around him like diverging the conversation towards eating salmon oh. and other things. It, it happens. So okay. Continue. It's a he brought it up last week, and I was like, our guests don't know this joke. Everybody online knows the joke. <laughs> I know the joke. Edward wanted to know. I'm asking and you. You always friend. involve our guests, and they're like, like, I don't, why are you talking about well, salmon? This lemony, gingery, garlicky smoothie I is really good. brightening me up, uh, and I feel it like it actually I'm really is cheers. significantly improved. And totally. I can't wait to like try it with apple and what's the other ingredient? Yeah. Parsley, banana, parsley. Yeah. Uh, forgot the celery, but the color is a little off-putting. Yeah. You know what? I think the color makes it look like it works really well. <laughs> that's what I think. I, I need more green things in my tea, so, so that's why I like Agree this. to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> that's really great. You well, put a lot of cinnamon in there. I, I put a, a shake it until I get Healthy. tired. <laughs> I know, okay. That's so good. So when you cook yourself and with, with runners, I think sometimes with anyone who cooks, the intimidation is how closely do I need to follow the recipe versus be in the kitchen and ad lib and how do you do that personally and then how do you recommend people do that when they're starting off? Yeah, so that was a big inspiration for the second book is we wanted to teach people to cook with what they have um, to mm. save on the expense of like having to buy very specific ingredients at the grocery yeah. store and we wanted to have every recipe have less ingredients than our first book yeah. um, so people can add or subtract as they want. So a lot of the recipes in here are just templates to follow. So um, like, for example, two of my favorites is the Power Bowl recipe because it just gives you a lot of different ideas and then you I can like customize that. it to suit your own taste buds, your own cravings, you're using what you have on hand. And by learning to cook with what you have in your own kitchen versus having to run to the store for one ingredient, you yeah, can save, save a lot of time let's, and save a lot of money. Let's dig in on that. So what, like, what, Actually, what so page why, is why the going into that? I'm going to show it on the screen because I think that we can do... Let's see if we can find it. This is very advanced. I know, right? I, yeah, it is. This is only, the, oh, this is an example of a power bowl, isn't it? Um, that's the Thai Kima salad bowl that was um, Shalane's absolute favorite recipe while training for Hold the on, guys. marathon. Wait, don't say that yet. I got to transfer over. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the process. There. there we go. There we go. And then, are we transitioned? We are. We are. All right, so this is the Thai bowl. Thai Kima salad. Thai Kima salad. Thai oh, Kima gotcha. salad. Nice. Shalane Flanagan favorite. Um, while training for the New York City Marathon last fall. Yeah. When we were in the midst of writing the book and recipe testing. That is just like us yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so so recipe testing, like in the development of this book, uh, how, like what recipes got included, which ones got the ax, and then how many times did you really test things before okay. it was in? So some recipes, it depends on the recipe. A lot of the baked recipes take like a lot more testing because it has to be absolutely perfect. So in the mm. new book, we have three versions of superhero muffins. Okay. Um, so I had an uh, awesome assistant with me the whole time in the kitchen with the second book. Yeah. And our like long-standing joke is like, how many superhero muffins did we really bake? Because there's three versions and there's three variations of each version. So there's technically nine versions. Wow. Of superhero muffins. And we probably did each one like at least 
a dozen times. So give, so give, so me, so so give, me, so give me examples of... Well, not each one, but each of the wow, main three flavors. That's cool. So give me examples of like what you would change. You're like, hmm, this like needs more cinnamon. Right. This one rest- needs more garlic. <laughs> It's really easy to tweak a recipe as you go if, you're, if it's something yeah. you're cooking, but with yeah. baking, like you have to bake the whole entire batch to yeah. Yeah. test it. You can't even make a half batch and test it because right. it, it can throw off the measurements. Um, so just adding more sweetener or more, um, sometimes you have to add more egg to give it more consistency or more anything. I can't imagine how many variations. I did. You never think about like the book and be yeah. like, wow, they cooked this 30 times in order to get it right. One thing I, I really love about the second book is yeah. Um, the photography shows how long it actually takes to make a cookbook because in half the photos I'm not pregnant yet, in half the photos <laughs> yeah, I'm super pregnant, yeah. and then in half the photos I'm two months postpartum and I have a baby on my shoulder, so it really shows people like, this is they like a whole whole project issue. that takes two years to do. Two that is crazy. I was looking at all the photos you guys have together, I'm like, man, those are like all different situations over right. like so many different, yeah. Yeah, and, and there's, the second book is really personal because Shalane and I really share our personal stories of writing this book while we were both both in the midst of really crazy times with Shalane training for New York City Marathon and me I was pregnant with my second right, baby yeah. and like we yeah so we I share a lot of that personal that's stuff that's awesome so what is up there what, this yes. is one of the power bowls yes so this is like a go-to for my family on a busy weeknight when okay. um, we got to get table dinner on the table fast everybody's hangry um, we eat power bowls on like at least once, if not twice, a week during the week. Okay. Um, and I just keep my fridge stocked with the essentials, and then we throw it together at the last minute. And it's a great way to use up random leftovers. So if I have leftover roasted sweet potatoes or leftover yeah. sautéed greens or whatever's left over, like that goes onto a power bowl. And then usually I top it with um, guacamole or avocado, and always yeah. a fried eggs. Just a little creaminess. Yeah. I love yeah. fried eggs. And so things. so what's the awesome. base you normally use? Is it uh? I, is it rice? Is my, it Go to is short grain brown rice. Short grain brown Just rice. Just love the consistency of it. Um, it's super nutritious. And these particular flavor. brand that you tend toward? Oh, I get it in the bulk bins, so I okay. don't know what the brand is. Okay, yeah. nice. Uh-huh. We had a question there from a uh, mm-hmm. super chat from Miss Rowe. Karen further up, yeah. Yeah, and she wanted to know so somebody tells people super chat, they add a couple bucks and they're like, hey, I'd love my question. And she says, what does she think about juice fasting? How long, etc.? Or do you like it at all? I'm not a fan of fasting diets at all. Um, just diets in general can. You want to go? You, know, you want to go back to big screen? Yep. Sorry. My um, producer is. I know right exactly. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Sleep at the wheel. I know. So I'm not a fan of juice fasts or um, extreme diets like that. It yeah. can be really hard on the body. Um, there are cases where it's needed for medical reason, but in general, I don't recommend doing a fast in. Diets like that can really slow down your metabolism over the long run. So I'm just all about really? eating, eating. If you're eating, um, this is this way of eating is a lifestyle, and if you're eating this way um, on a daily basis, there's no need for for that kind yeah. of crazy diet. If you're doing a good job in the beginning, like okay. you don't need to have these crazy swings. There, I hear you there. Um, oh yeah, well, yeah. I get that right. Oh, what, yeah. what did it say? And it also before? says episode sixty. That's why I took that off. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Pick we had distracted right. with the smoothie. Oh, I that's not my name. I know. I know. Yeah. Get in there. Uh, that I is. To say it first. That's yeah, like, that is. Um, there you go. I, I like that. I'm not like a juice fast guy. Like I'm not. I'm not a juice fast uh, person either. I'm not like a. Okay. Like what about supplements? Because that's another big thing. Right. Um, are there any that you're like? Okay, this is overdone. Um, we've got a beet T-shirt on. Are you like a beet powder person? Yes. Like, Can you <laughs> what does it say? You can't be beat me. And she has the matching bag, which is adorable. I'm just gonna bring this over. Look at this. Oh, I love it. So cute. Mm-hmm. There we go. You can't see it very well, but yeah. I'm a big fan of beets. But you, I, I get beets um, every week from my farm share. Okay. And I just instantly throw them, as soon as they come in, I throw them in the Instant Pot and have them cooked and in the fridge. Uh, yeah. Okay, gotcha. So, because if I don't have it cooked and sitting there, I'm, I'm not, it's, it's going to get so lost in the fridge. It's so long to cook otherwise, so you like, can't yeah. cook it and like... Right, so I throw them in right away, because then I have them in there and beets are super versatile. I throw them into smoothies, I put them in yeah. salads. I just, I pickle them sometimes. I love it. So, so the beets, you get them, you chop off the, the heads, you leave yeah. the skin on? To throw them in the instant pot, yeah. I, leave, I leave them on, on peeled, and I you put them in water. Um, 
put them on like a steamer basket in the instant pot and a little oh. bit of water in the bottom. Okay. Depending on the size of the bee, it yep. usually takes like 15 minutes. That's it? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. The instant pots are incredible. Uh, Sam chimes in and says, exactly. I got Jamaica jerk chicken in a crock pot right now. Plan is to bake roast uh, acorn squash for dinner. Uh, love to mix it up. I love it. Okay, yeah. so the, the beet thing I'm definitely going to do. Yeah, and then don't throw out the beet greens. It's yeah. super healthy. Okay. It's another green, though, that it's better to saute. Uh, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> like, I'm going to put it in the freezer. Oh, this is, this is an interesting question. I'm sure you get some version of this. Um, but from GDK Mouse, and again, we're just getting used to YouTube right. usernames, which are super GDK fun. Mouse has been with us for a long time. I now. know, yeah. totally. Ride or die right there. <laughs> yeah. um, she says, finding food veg um, that are not too expensive is hard. You always hear this, right? Um, what does an average weekly food shop cost? She kind of puts in UK pounds or, or dollars compared to a normal non-runner food shopping. So maybe the thing is, is like, Okay, if I'm a runner, I'm eating more, right. I'm putting more into these things, like... Yeah, so your grocery bill is going to go up substantially. I'm not going to lie about that mm -hmm. or trick you about that. Like, you are going to expect to pay more at the grocery store to eat this way. Um, but it's an investment in long-term health. health yeah. And think of the cost of one injury as a runner and how you go to see a physical therapist, you go get a massage, you go yeah. get new running shoes because you think your running shoes are throwing off your stride. Like. There's so much expense if you get injured, mm -hmm. um, so this is going to help you not get injured. So you just you can't go. Not to mention if you're sick and you're not body. working, yeah. and then yeah. that can affect yeah. your insurance premiums yeah. and right. costs. There's just so many things. So I'll it's like, something do you want to pay for it now, or do you want to pay <laughs> two or three times as much later? But, but even on the price, like I would say that my experience of, of trying out, we're going to shut this window because we don't have much traffic. My experience of going to the farmer's market and then comparing prices with like Buy Right, which is a very expensive grocery store in uh, yeah. in San Francisco, compared to Whole Foods, compared to Safeway, is that one, the produce that you get at everything but Safeway is, and even Whole Foods is not quite as good as, as Buy Right and the, sure. um, but you get produce like as close to the farm as you can and it is just loads different. I mean, the taste per blueberry is like crazy different. It's worth it. Now, we're, Plus, also, oh, we're, people, we're in California, yeah, like, yeah. we have incredible access to food year round. My wife and I go to our farmer's market like every Sunday yep. and it's the Marin Civic Center. It is huge. Like the Rose Bond yeah. Rose, we get stuff all the time and it's, and it's actually not that bad, you know, but there are people who live in cities where it's like, they don't have that, yep. just right. don't have the access. So for someone who is a little bit more on the budget, because we do have busy families where mm -hmm. they want to do this, they they're not ready to go full, right? you know, full crazy ginger lemon smoothie. Like what's like a first step for them? Like what would you recommend? Well, um, we have a whole section in the new cookbook on time saving and budget okay. saving tips oh, for really? our families. Yes. So, um, so I'm almost so like, I, almost like I knew yeah, that. Exactly. Um, there's lots of things you can do to save in the grocery store. One is buying things um, in peak season. So if you're okay. if you're buying apples right now in the in, during the summer, you're going to pay a lot more for them. If you're because they're for, having to travel they're from coming somewhere from yeah. South America. Um, so buying things that are in season are they're going to be less expensive. Yep. Um, grocery stores often, if you know your key ingredients that you're using over and over again, like olive oil, coconut oil. Um, honey, things like that, that are often more expensive, you can buy them in bulk to save yeah. a lot of money. And grocery stores often have like big sales. So if I see my favorite olive oil on sale, I have like a very organized pantry and I'll buy two and keep it stashed away mm. safely. Um, and then things, power bowls are like a go-to inexpensive meal for families. Um, rice and beans, super inexpensive yep, right. food. And you can add whatever veggie, throwing in sweet potatoes. I mean, yeah. it's only going to cost a couple bucks. For the dinner. I think that yeah. for me, the key in terms of price has been when I'm in grocery stores that sell really great produce like Whole Foods or mm -hmm. like some of these kind of, I try not to buy anything that's packaged right. because the packaged stuff in those grocery stores is like super expensive and it's tempting to go there and then just like, I do all my shopping there. And yeah. then, and then the other thing is like, um, beans and like spices. I feel like spices are not that expensive right. and like they really change the taste of your food and you can take something like a, like a like dried really beans that really turn it into something yeah. pretty great, which yeah. I love about some uh, of your recipes. I'm big on like um, anything that has is a higher fat food. We love foods that are rich and high in fat. Yeah. Those are the foods though that are worth buying organic or local yeah. because fat stores toxins. So anytime you buy meat, it's really important to buy high quality meat. So buying less of it, um, for, in your case, since yeah. you love salmon, 
go for the wild <laughs> salmon and buy less of it. <laughs> um, Rock salmon. Oh, throwing it back top. in. I got so a line and sinker. There we go. Have have your wild salmon for special occasions and buy less of it, but really enjoy it. And yeah, um, yeah. So I yeah. did. I did want to bring and that then up eat on sardines when you're on a budget. Sardines yeah. are cheap. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> so I did want to bring that up about you know circling back to that juicy burger comment. Um, how often would you recommend most people eat said juicy burger? I feel like we, you definitely more than me, but, but me, I'm getting to the point where I've just been so meat focused. Like I grew up that like food dinner or lunch was like your protein and you had the stuff right. around it. Things like the Power Bowl and others are, are kind of changing that. So it's like, do you have any problems like going vegetarian yourself? Do you flow back and forth? Right. Like how much meat do you eat? Um, I eat quite a bit of meat right now because I'm nursing and throughout pregnancy I really crave that. Yeah. Everyone's different so some people can do really well on a vegetarian diet with like the beans and the veggies and stuff. Personally like I can't have that high fiber diet and I, I have a really high metabolism. I need the meat in yeah. my diet and if you're training heavy or you're pregnant or nursing or there's times in your life where it's going to change how much you need. Yeah. I have two young kids also and they are such carnivores. They crave the meat. So we have it just about every night with dinner. Yeah. My husband and I were just saying like Do they have with lunch as well or uh, breakfast? Usually breakfast and lunch is vegetarian. Okay. Um, oh, okay. But oh, okay. sometimes we'll have well eggs are eggs are often a staple for breakfast. But sure. My husband and I were just saying how pre-kids we ate a lot more vegetarian but now with kids like we see them they're growing so fast. Yeah, they both gravitate and really. If I ever serve vegetarian dinner to my four year old, she doesn't touch it. Oh so, really? So we do a lot, but yeah. we buy really high quality meat direct from like local farmers yeah. in Bend, and we buy it in bulk, so it's not as expensive. Right. You know, one of the other things that I found with you know again, California is a special place in terms of like the availability of stuff. But I have found that when I started going towards like higher quality stuff, I I didn't believe this was true until I started started doing it. I really don't purchase as much food, like quantity-wise, yeah. as much food as I did before. And it, and there really is something that you don't need as much quantity when you start getting high quality. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was very surprised about that. Yeah. That is interesting. So we, we have two questions uh -huh. that are around uh, vegan. We have Gramule that just wrote, go vegan in all caps. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's more of a statement than a question. Yeah. Uh, Yelemi Pagan says, does the book include tasty vegan recipes? Right. And then further up, Mighty Mom K, recommendations for women entering menopause and sensitive GI on a vegan diet. That's vegan a very challenge. Yeah, specific challenge, or yeah. a specific question. Um, that's, so a vegan diet doesn't work for everyone. Yeah. By the that's way, I'm so say. glad you are here <laughs> to answer these questions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I personally wouldn't be able to eat a vegan diet. Some people can thrive on it, but if you do have sensitive GI or sensitive digestion is a much harder diet to digest. You have to consume a lot more quantity to get, you know, the nutrients that you yeah. need. Um, a vegan diet can be done correctly, but it takes a lot of effort to do it correctly because yeah. you can't. Um, all right, on a vegan health. diet, you're going to be missing, you got to be eating thing, unusual foods and it, foods in the right combination yeah. to get complete proteins. Um, you can eat things like quinoa, which is a complete protein, but like um, foods have to be eaten in the right combination. You have to have some unusual foods in your diet like seaweed to get all the B vitamins that you would uh. normally be getting from meat. Um, a lot of vegans end up relying on the vegan packaged foods, okay. which are some of like the worst foods out there for you. Really? They're really processed all the... Um, tofu products are like really highly processed soy, which is really difficult to digest. Interesting. Yeah. Um, but so, it can be, I mean, also on the other hand, there's some people who are able so, to eat that So way. go vegan, but don't go processed. Go vegan and um, you'll be in the kitchen a few hours every day. But Yeah, yeah. a bit extra time. So guys, if you're just tuning in, just a reminder, we are with uh, author Elise Kopecki with her co-author, um, Shalane Flanagan. Flanagan, who wrote their follow-up. Run fast, cook fast, eat slow. You can get a signed copy just by hitting the, uh, the Gleam link in the description of the YouTube video. So just scroll down, hit that. Um, follow these ladies on Instagram. They're posting great stuff all the time. This book literally just came out. You can get a signed copy sent to you. So that's gonna be the fun part there. Awesome. Um, so you guys did a lot in this first book. Mm -hmm. um, hey look, your favorite thing on the back. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, there you go. We got a little salmon right there, right? Um, you know, what, like, 
did you, was this, um, let me try, let me see what I'm trying to say. Um, were you expecting this book to go as well as it did or did that surprise you? When Shalane and I first had the idea to write this cookbook, we were just, uh, we've been friends for 18 years. We were reuniting over a home cooked meal in her house and it, um, popped up as an idea. Um, we like dreamed about it for an entire year. We never thought it would take off like this. Yeah. We, um, when I first started writing it, I was like, what if, I said to Shalane, like on text message, what if no one wants to publish our book? And yeah. that's what we thought. Like, And then she was like, well, we'll just self-publish it. But when I finished the like original 50-page book proposal and we sent it out to publishers, we had eight publishers bid on our book. Wow. So we that's knew awesome. that we were on to something that was yeah. really needed. Um, but beyond all the media accolades and um, being on the New York Times bestseller list, what has inspired us to write the second book is the stories and letters that we've received from fans of just like the life-changing impact of um, young athletes, especially changing their diets and how much it's helped their health and their running and just their overall happiness. And that's why we wrote the second book. Wow, it's incredible. It's really, really impressive. So the Run Fast Eat Slow, who came up with that? That's uh. That's my. Uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Pretty amazing. I can't remember. I think I was just in like working in a coffee shop when I had it as our like working title for a while, yeah. and it just stuck, and we ended up going with it. Were there any alternate titles that the <laughs> titles that you guys have considered? <laughs> oh, yeah. I have to go back and find my brainstorm notes. There were some bad titles. Oh, that's great. Is there any ones you want to share? Gosh, yeah, that was so long ago. I can't even remember. Yeah, because this, this is but when this book came out in 2016. 2016. Yeah, yeah, incredible. Two year, exactly. Yeah, amazing. Two years ago, but I started working on this um, just after my daughter was born, my first daughter. Yeah. So that was in 2014. So oh. you probably originally didn't have plans to write a second book after this one. Yeah. No. When did you, when did the the idea of okay okay we need to in another book right. uh, when did that start to percolate? Well, like the day after our book launched, I think our editor was like, "What's are you starting the next book? And I was like, wait. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. I'm, I'm just taking long. a breath here. Yeah, um, no kidding. But during our book tour, we just had such an incredible outpouring of support from runners. And we started to just, people were became huge fans of these recipes. And we had like a cult-like following with superhero muffins. And people just wanted more and more of these recipes. Um, and we heard people's stories of how busy they were and yeah. how hard it was to fit in work and training and cooking. Um, so we wanted to make a book that was the recipes were even faster and easier faster. for beginners. Yeah. Um, but we didn't start working on the second book until the book tour of the first book was complete. Yeah. And we started really getting letters from people and emails um, from moms of girls who suffered from disordered eating habits who had like read the book cover to cover and had right. overcome these really crazy, Amazing. really hard um, health issues. Wow. And, and you guys are just, you're going to be in New York next week, right? Yes. Yeah. So is that going to be similar in that you have like a, like a run yeah. and then a uh, book signing? Yeah. We have a run um, with New York Roadrunners at the Run Center. Oh, fun. Or not a run. Um, just at that event, we're going to be doing um, book signing because of the crowds. But um, they posted the event and it was filled up in like less than 24 hours. Nice. So we're trying to figure out a way to get more people into it, but it is, yeah. it is full. The, the We had a hell of a crowd. I was just, it was, yeah. it was really cool yesterday. We loved Coming to San Francisco the first time. I got shirts. Awesome. Yeah, I know we got them all. Right? I like that I one. Yeah. I, I like this one too. You know who these are um, comments of is um, Brett Lamb yeah, from Fleet Feet. That's so awesome. yeah, yeah. put it on. It's so really cool. Shout out to you, Brett. Yeah, uh, it's actually so amazing, cool. amazing event today. We love Fleet Feet. Yeah, yeah they do a good job. They do a great job. Um, so we have another question from Elizabeth. Um, she mentions that you included uh, Shalane's marathon meal plan. Is this only meant for elite pro level runners or is this meant for all levels of runners to, um, right. to use? So all levels of runners can eat this way. And we get asked that question all the time. People will say, it's great that Shalane can eat butter because she's running 20 miles a day, mm -hmm. but I'm right. only running three miles. I can't eat this way. Mm -hmm. But it's just about listening to your body's hunger signals and adjusting yeah. and having portion control and adjusting it to suit your needs. And that's the other reason why we want to get away from counting calories. When you count calories, you lose the ability to like listen to your own hunger and diet mm. and um, know how much to eat. So we want people to get back in tune with that. Sit down and eat a meal and eat slowly, and you'll know like when you're full, and you'll be yeah. able to know if you need to supplement with more snacks or not. So someone who someone who's training for their first 5K could eat the exact same dishes that Shalane ate while marathon training, um, but they maybe wouldn't need as many of the in between like snacks. 
Yeah. Yeah. What, you know, I less peanut butter cups, less, yeah, less peanut butter cups. This is such a challenge. And I just love your thoughts on this. I don't even know if there's a real hard answer, but you know, when people say, listen to your body, there's this intuitiveness that's happening. Um, just talking to you, I can tell you're very, you seem to be very dialed in. Um, she picked up on the garlic from the knife <laughs> on the board that chopped the lemon that went into the smoothie. That's a real thing. That's a real thing. But for someone who is like, what does that even mean? Like, I don't even know what listening to your body means. Right. Like, what signals am I trying to pay attention to? How do I start? Oh gosh, I don't It's know. a hard question, right? That's what I mean. See, this is something we talk about a lot actually in our, we have a whole training program right. and, and what we try to get people to do, and, and you'll, you guys, I, you know, a lot of people watching this are in our training programs already, uh -huh. is that like, you know, following the training program is, is great, but it's only a suggestion compared to what you're listening to your body every day you go out there, every day you're training and you're familiar with this as, as anybody who's, who's trained for a long time, which is if you're not constantly listening to your body and adjusting things as per like right. what's going on with yeah. you, you know, you're really going to go, you run into a tight spot. I think the best tip I can give for getting back in tune with listening yeah. to bodies to know when you're hungry or full is to leave your phone out of the kitchen. Cause like if you're sitting down to eat and you're on your phone, Mm. You're not going to be You're not present. With, yeah. Interesting. So just get, getting off technology when we're eating and enjoying a meal with friends or family or just sitting and quietly eating. And maybe just starting to maybe ask. more mindfully. Maybe just starting to ask the question to yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and getting, and getting right. in that way. But it's, it's, it's a challenge. Yeah. Right. You, I, I'm curious, like, how did you, like, when you're coming up with these recipes, were these recipes that you already had in your repertoire? Or are you just, Ooh, are you like, like I'm not that. <laughs> You really, that was a real like French way of doing it. He's trying to, yeah. Craig's pulling out all the stops today, guys. But you know, <laughs> you know. I'll start speaking Portuguese Fancy. pretty soon. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So the recipes are inspired by years of ex experiences for me. Um, some, of the some of the recipes have stories behind them and they're inspired by things that Shalane and I ate in college that we cooked together. Some of the recipes are inspired by my time living abroad in Europe. I lived in Amsterdam for two years and um, Switzerland for two years. And, oh, where um, in Switzerland? Yeah, that's Geneva. Geneva. I live in Geneva too, no in way. college, yeah. Oh, I lived in Carouge, just outside of Geneva in a small little village. Oh, that's amazing. Um, I also so you'll, have so, wanted to live in Geneva, but I haven't done it yet. Okay, so then, so like you'll have to... <laughs> <laughs> to get out of here. So you'll have to share, like, I would love like two stories. Okay. One story from okay, like... I finish saying the, the question. What was oh, the question? Oh, this is part of our show, is that we interrupt each other and start the other things. Um, yeah. Now, what was the question? <laughs> now you're getting the hang of it. Now, now you're, you're getting the hang of the live show. <laughs> or, or your questions. And then well, what, are you gonna, what are you going to question her afterwards <laughs> that she can't answer them? I, I, I will slow down, I promise. Um, I wanted to hear just a little story about those recipes. So maybe right. like oh, one yeah. story. Right, that's um, what we're talking about. Yeah, from you and Shalane, okay. and then yeah. maybe one story from you living in Europe yeah. in terms of recipes. Yeah, so that's what I was talking about. Let me finish. So when I lived in Europe, I had the chance to, um, when I was working over there, travel a lot. And so anytime I had a rule, anytime I went to a new country, I always took a cooking class. So a lot oh, of recipes are cool. inspired by my time living in Europe. And then a lot of the recipes in the second book are inspired by fan favorites from the first book. Oh, um, nice. So, for example, superhero muffins. We now have three versions of superhero muffins in the second book. Um, some of the popular smoothie recipes in the first book inspired the second book. And then just like what people went berserk for like the kale farro salad in the second book. So we have more of like the grain salads or in the first book. So a lot of that was inspired by that. Um, in the second book, let me think of one that like there's stories behind all the recipes. Yeah. So, Shalane came um, to my house after she had to drop out of the Boston Marathon. She was like super bummed and low, and um, she was injured for the first first major injury. And ever. This is in 2017. Yep. 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 Six yeah. months before, just setting the scene, so right. people know, like six months before New York or so. Right. So she was feeling like really bummed, and she, I said, "Come to Bend, and we'll cook together. We'll work on recipes for the second book." And the very first recipe that we churned out in my kitchen. Um, that made it into this book is the Thai quinoa salad and it became there's an emotional connection for her with that recipe um, that was what helped her heal and come back and she ate that all the way leading up to the the week before the New York wow. City Marathon wow. so she talks about that story of being like this recipe really healed me emotionally and physically um, so that's one of her favorites from the book and I have same thing when I had was my son was born um, a few days after I stopped working on the manuscript for this book, yeah. 
I had suffered from after labor really low iron. I never had had yeah. low. I was never anemic mm -hmm. before in my life. Yeah. And I was after labor. Um, and I started making this like soup that I would just throw into the instant pot and have it ready by the end of the day. Um, because I was working and had taken care of a newborn. And I was so, the soup helped me recover so well that it, I snuck it into the book as a, a late addition, and I talk about that in the book. So oh, those are some it. stories, but every recipe has a story behind it. And at, when you guys pick up the book, um, you'll notice, and again, uh, we have a Gleam link if you want to win the book. There's also an Amazon link direct to get it, also in the description. But when you pick up the book, you'll notice that it's something that, like, uh, when I when I yeah. got this book, um, I was actually just reading it because you can actually there's so many stories in here about about you guys, your friendship, and then how each each recipe has like uh, a story. A, a, literally a story behind it. So it's pretty it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I really love the, uh, the start of this book where it talks about your friendship and like thank you. The romance yeah. is really good. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited to dig in. I haven't gotten a chance to go in as far as I would like to. Well, I always recommend this book as you can see. Yeah. Yeah, uh, a friend who gave it to me, like, like yeah, like definitely, yeah. She was like, I, and I asked, I actually asked Allison, uh, you know, like, why this book, like, why is this the one that you keep going back to? And she's like, well, most food books like have great pictures, but she's like, everything I try to hear is delicious. It's like it's very simple, and shockingly, like that's not the case with every cookbook. So, yeah, good choice. That was yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> which, which ones did she have yeah. have your marked? I like the pecan truffles. Did she make those for you yet? No, she did not yet. Oh, I'll put in a request there. Oh, man. All right. So, so Edward says, I'm not counting on winning anything, so I bought mine on Amazon already. I'd love to have an autographed version. All right, we will see what we can do, Edward. <laughs> Edward, Edward is, is both a uh, frequenter on our, our live shows as well yeah. as does some work for us. So yeah. we'll get you guys some signed book plates that you can mail out that people can stick in their book. Oh, oh yeah, that, that would be yeah. super People fun. who already have the book. Yeah, super good. Well guys, I'm gonna go through some more questions here. Um, I th he's asking, is the book available, Christoph asks, is the book available in an EPUB file format? format? I, if you're asking about, is that the Kindle format? If it is, then it, I think it is yeah, available in Kindle format. You can format. get it um, both formats. Yeah. Kindle, what's the other one called? Um, EPUB? I don't know. Yeah. You can buy it. Um, the loser to the I love the, the e there's the ebook version. So I have both versions. Yeah. I like having the ebook version on my phone so that yeah. when I'm in the grocery store and I want to make a recipe, you can just search. That's really funny. You yeah. use your own book to. And I, that's really good. That I is like really, that. really good. Everyone thinks yeah. I have every mess recipe memorized. Yeah. <laughs> No. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, let me consult my cookbook. Yeah. Just a minute here. That's so great. Um, Carrie Hale asks, and she's a she's a regular on our on our show, any advice on helping teenagers eat vegetables? I'm sure right. you get some iteration of that make question pretty good. frequently. I am experiencing so my four year old is an incredible eater, she eats everything, and I was like, Oh, I really know what I'm doing. But now I have the pickiest ten month bulb in the whole world. Gotcha. So I totally can relate to moms who suffer. Like if you get if you put in a lot of effort to make a dinner that's healthy and flavorful and you think your kids are going to love it and they don't, that's like really hard to deal with. Yeah. Um, and you don't want to like force kids that can lead to other issues. So mm. um, like three things. One is there's other healthy things they can eat besides vegetables. So um, if you're cooking all these other foods that we have in our book, they're yeah. still going to get a lot of great nutrition without having to have vegetables at every meal. I do or like do, forcing it right, on them, yeah. I do make smoothies just about every morning in our household and I sneak veggies into that. And then muffins, I always have Kinda veggies like in, one. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and my yeah, my kids love my daughter loves um, green smoothies. She calls them dinosaur smoothies for some uh, I don't know. Aren't I like dinosaur, 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 dinosaur smoothies. Dinosaurs are green, you know. I get um, that. and then she loves beet smoothies because of the purple vibrant color. And my kids I also sneak veggies into hummus. They love um, in the first book, the beet hummus, and in the second book, the sweet potato hummus, mm -hmm. and make just baking with sweet potatoes, putting them in stuff, and just making vegetables taste really good by cooking them with fat can help. Yeah. Kids are more likely to eat. Yeah, and make them fun. It, it seems interesting because it's not necessarily just the flavor of the vegetable itself, but maybe the texture of it or how it mm -hmm. looks that like scares kids off. Yeah. I have, so we're gonna run out of time here soon, but I have one question, which is, you said that when you go to the farmers market or go to the grocery store, you come back, you put your beets in the instant pot. What are the other like processing things you do on a regular basis? Like you right. get sweet potatoes, you put them out, like what, what yeah. are the things that are kind of like the regular? Yeah, so I try to dedicate, the best thing you can do is to meal prep every week. I dedicate two hours every Sunday afternoon where like I ask my husband to get the kids out of the kitchen, I put yeah. away my phone, and in two hours, if I really focus, I can get a ton of meal prep done. 
I always make um, a homemade salad dressing. I'll make a double batch of pesto and I'll freeze half of it or a hummus. Mm. I, anytime I cook something, I double the recipe. Sure. Yeah, I yeah. love to have leftovers and I love to freeze things. Um, I always, sharp. except, yeah, except, yeah. <laughs> except the greens, I don't freeze. Um, I will, on a Sunday, I'll roast a big tray of veggies, usually sweet, okay. sweet potatoes because my kids love sweet potato fries. Um, I'll make a big thing of brown rice in the Instant Pot. Sure. I do, um, I'll marinate some chicken to throw on the grill like the next day, Okay. things like that. And then um, I usually, my go-to like Sunday staple that I feel like off during the week if I don't do it is making a grain salad, a really mm. hearty grain salad with an olive oil based dressing. I throw in like feta and nuts and um, veggies and usually I do like quinoa or wild, wild okay. rice yeah. and farro. And then that's my work lunch during the week because I don't have time to stop and like prep lunch every day, but if I have it already in containers, ready Oh, you have the whole, like, the yeah. whole salad's made in containers in the fridge? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and you get it all done in two hours. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, I've been doing it for a few years. Yeah, now. yeah. She's, you know, <laughs> She's like, I'm a pro at this. I first got into it. There's a, there's a book called The Everlasting Meal by Tamara Adler that yeah. it had this whole kind of process that was... Right. It was more like... Written like Multitasking. A, yeah. And, and right. I would say that I'm... I use a lot of shortcuts. Yeah, like, where you are. Right. I'm doing multiple things in the kitchen at the same time. And sometimes I'll get stuff going in advance. So yeah. I can get it done in two hours. Like yeah. if, if the beets are already cooked or the right. quinoa's already cooked from the day before, mm -hmm. then you can quickly throw yeah. it into a salad. Or sometimes I just have the individual parts and then I need to assemble it. For, sure, for yeah. it's still a lot faster because yeah. you have to prep. Now you mentioned, and this might be a nice way to like kind of circle back to your earlier comments about being in the kitchen and that it is uh, like a nourishing thing, not mm -hmm. only for body but for kind of mind. You mentioned when you do this prep, you're like kids out of the kitchen, I put my phone away. Right. It sounds like this is like kind of two hours of like you unplugging a little bit. It just doesn't sound stressful the way you describe it. Yeah, I mean cooking, it can be stressful if you're trying to do it at six o'clock and your kids are hangry, you're, you know, the whole family's in the kitchen, like what's for dinner? Yeah. It can be stressful to get it on, dinner on the table fast by having these things like pre-cooked, it can be, cooking can be very meditative. Also like getting people to help in the kitchen um, can be like making yeah. a family fair. So I often cook, I sometimes cook on my own when I really need to do a lot at once, but right. yeah. I also try to incorporate Make my four year old to help, help me. She loves making the chocolate peanut butter cups awesome. in the new book. Yeah, yeah, I saw the picture there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Oh, that's cute. Very cool. Yeah. The prep stuff is super interesting because I feel like it's the rituals of doing so over and over and over again that like mm -hmm. actually gets my diet to change. Yeah, yeah. I, I highly recommend um, to to get faster and more confident in the kitchen, taking cooking classes locally. There's lots of yeah. like through cooking schools you can do even free cooking classes. Um, and especially best to save time is to take like a knife skills class so you can okay go. You're not yeah. intimidated coming home from the farmer's market with a whole bag of veggies like and being feeling like you have to put five hours into chopping it all. Right. Yeah. Um, learning proper knife skills can save a ton of time. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. I, prove that. I haven't actually taken a knife skills class, but I know. I like that idea. Uh, we have a few, well, we have a lot of questions. We won't be able to get to everyone's, but I wanted to hit two more of the things we haven't fully talked about yet. We kind of, well, we covered this a little bit on the vegan side. Um, Jessica, also one of our longtime runners, and she, she works for us as well. Um, she, right. um, you know, says like processed soy foods aside, is this a vegetarian right. friendly cookbook? Yeah, I would say probably ninety percent of our recipes are still vegetarian. I have a, I should oh, count wow. in the second book, in the new book. Um, so ninety percent. Well, or vegetarian options. Or vegetarian so, options. So a lot of the recipes are flexible, but all of the um, breakfast recipes. We have two breakfast chapters because um, runners love breakfast. So oh, all the oh, breakfast yeah, recipes yeah. are vegetarian. All the treats and baked goods and sauces are vegetarian. Then the main dishes can easily be made vegetarian, like power bowls. You can convert it to vegetarian. Most, yeah. I think just about all the salads are vegetarian, so there's a lot of options. The meat dishes are like add-ons, so like you can skip, yeah. skip over those easily. Oh, that's great. But I will definitely go in and count and say for sure. Right, yeah. so it's not like that's a boring awesome. thing yeah. of vegetables and, with this giant ribeye steak. Um, You've got something that's really mixed in. And a lot of the veg recipes are vegan friendly because we just don't use a lot of dairy in general because runners are sensitive yeah, to dairy. Yeah, so they can see it. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, another one is on sugar. Uh, Rachel asks, okay, where does sugar fit in? Do you eat sugar desserts? Sugar is my downfall. How much right. do you all eat? Um, so I can't avoid dark chocolate. Um, mm. Gotta have a little square of that after most meals just for my sweet tooth. What, what percent do you like? Um, 
I look for dark chocolate seventy percent or higher. Yeah. But I I'm I like bitter flavors, so yeah. I will even eat like the eighty percent dark chocolate. Mm. For some people, that's too bitter. Um, I use natural sweeteners instead of sugar. Yeah. So I don't eat a lot of processed sugar. Um, I try to find balance. There's always a time and a place for treats. Um, we have a lot of great sweet treats in here that use um, sweeteners like molasses, maple syrup, and honey are my go-to. Um, okay. I love molasses because it's really high in iron, which a lot yeah. of runners need more of. It's got this um, like really rich yeah, and it's, flavor. Right, it has a strong flavor, so it doesn't work well in like every kind of recipe. Um, but I love honey too and maple syrup, and it's just about finding balance. Um, but sweet treats definitely have a place in my home. Yeah, That's and there are good. some good ones in here that I'm looking forward to trying. Yeah, My yeah. favorite is the matcha energy balls that are dipped, would that be? dipped in chocolate. Um, oh wow, that sounds delicious. Where did that where did that recipe come from? How did you it's Yeah, so look, it's beautiful. <laughs> look at look at that. Let's do a little close up there. Can you guys see it? It's a little blown out. Yeah, that's all right. But you know what? When you get the book, you'll have full access. <laughs> we want to give away the recipe online. I know. And before we do yeah. um, our okay. giveaway from last week and we thank Elise uh, for her time being so gracious with us today after having a very busy book signing event yesterday, um, where can people learn more about the book or even are there any places right. to try a recipe? Yeah, we have um, some great recipes on our website, runfasteatslow.com, um, and you'll find more about our book tour and we just launched a new blog and we're going to be posting yeah, meal plans and meal prep tips and eventually if you guys teach me how to do this live stuff, I hope to have cooking yeah. classes <laughs> on our website. Yeah. Um, we would so love. We'll be your first so students. Runfasteatslow.com and yeah. yeah, run fast, eat slow, and then they're both on Instagram. All those links are in the Gleam link, so yeah. you've already seen them if you signed up. Might as well enter the giveaway and, um, and get a free book. You yeah, know? so we're actually going to be doing the giveaway from. So what we do with the giveaways is that there are a lot of people that watch the show and they're not live. So we're gonna we're gonna do the giveaway and the drawing next week. So if you're watching this and it's not live, still hit the Gleam link below, and then you can still enter. And next week we'll be drawing the book and sending that out. And then, and this week we're going to be doing a drawing from last week, which is also food related, oh. which is a uh, nutrition consultation with our, our, our man Brian Tublin. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Shall we do it? Let's do it. You ready? And All right. as I'm starting to, to work on this. Oh, um, oh yeah. I know. You have to drink a little bit more than that just to make me feel good, <laughs> if nothing else. Look, I drank the whole, I, I, I gave her just a little bit, but then you know what the problem was? Is the garlic kicked in and. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Well, now you mention it, it's like, oh yeah, that's there. So we've got so two garlic here. Surprise. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Um, fantastic. So winners of last week's giveaway was a nutrition consultation. We, pretty rarely, we had two nutrition things back to back. But John Duffy uh, from Washington, D.C. and Angie Minnick from Indianapolis. You guys are both a winner of a nutrition consult with Brian Tublin. Congratulations. We'll reach out via email uh, to connect you with Brian so you can go from there. And you're in town for the rest of the day. Yep. There's a, Brian is actually a really interesting entrepreneur who um, took an old McDonald's and when they vacated the premises, he turned it into a, a health food restaurant oh, cool. and it's just here in the mission. So oh, we I had him on and he brought a, it's called Kitava. K -A -T -A. Oh, awesome. I was walking outside before coming to you. I was yep. coming to your event yesterday and I was walking outside and there was a girl that passed by me right here on the sidewalk and had a Kitava shirt on. I was like, no, hey, right. hey, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. You guys, are, I'll, I'll you, guys yeah. you guys would get along. You guys would get along just amazing. Amazing. Okay, well, cool. Yeah. So yeah. if you have a chance. Um, and before we go, at least like, what's next? Do we expect the third book? Oh, Are man. we? Yeah. <laughs> we should be saying, by this notion, she should be starting the third book right, right now, right? I think two books and two children is probably enough right now. <laughs> so third kid, <laughs> no, and no. then a third book. <laughs> My books have aligned with having kids, so yeah, I'm afraid if I have, if I start a third book, I'll end up with a third kid. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. um, so are you, you're running like recreationally still? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I just run for fun. I'm a trail runner and um, living in Bend, Oregon. It's yeah, like, amazing. incredible to get out on the trails. Yeah. I haven't been running as much the past year because of having a baby right. and nursing, but I'm excited. And writing a book. Yeah, yeah. Just and after the book yeah. tour, I'm excited <laughs> to, to get back out on the trails and oh, do some. So great. That's awesome. in Marin. I have a lot of trails yeah. up there. It's, it's a lovely thing. We could keep talking for yes. a long time, I'm sure, but again, uh, at least thank you so much thank for joining you. us today yeah. at TREHQ. Guys, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we can't always get to all your questions, but thank you for posting. We try to get to most of them. 
Just ask you next week, and we'll we'll jump in there. Yeah. Yeah, and we would love to have you guys on again. Do some time. Like we could do cool. a cooking show. Pack you guys that. in. Yeah, it'd be great. You can come up to Bend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we love awesome. that. That'd be kitchen. so great. Is it? Is that where the photos are from? Because um, the photos are beautiful. Those are Schle- the, the my Schlein's kitchen house? is under construction right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was Shalane's house. The wow. first book was both our kitchens, so there's yeah. different kitchens, but the second book is Shalane's kitchen. Oh, my wonderful. My kitchen that's was awesome. too ugly, yeah. but now it's getting better. But that's so better. There we go. Now it's, awesome. now it's cooked. Well, thank you again for coming on. Yeah, guys, thank you again for tuning in. We will see you next week, same time. Catch you next time. And wait for the outro. Do we have an outro today? I don't know. Did you set it up? I don't know. (laughs) Okay, the Ashes are hip routine this time. There we go. All right, see you guys.